So gene drive, you may have heard about, and just to be clear, this is not something that we personally do in our lab, but it's, <laughs> but it's a class. That you know of. Uh, well, <laughs> sure. Yeah, maybe I have uh, you know one of my graduate student uh, underlings uh. back at the bench right now. But so the basic idea is, since CRISPR originated as a bacterial immune system, so in essence a defense system against invading pathogens, and we are already repurposing it um, in terms of targeting sequences that we want to target, uh, the next step is to now genetically introduce the components of CRISPR. Um, in this case, it would be the Cas9 nuclease, the gene encoding it, if you put that into the genome of a mosquito, for example, uh, along with the appropriate guide RNAs and then whatever other payload you want. And so we have colleagues who are doing this in uh, mosquitoes that um, carry malaria, and what they do is they also, along with the Cas9 and the guide RNA, they uh, express genes that um, uh, express antibodies against the uh, plasmodium, which is the malaria parasite. And so the key here is that when you put this whole package into the genome of the mosquito, and then, which they haven't done yet, but uh, they talk about doing, if you release it into the environment, this now becomes uh, something that is going to break the rules of Mendelian inheritance. So the one animal you release into the environment uh, will mate with a wild-type animal, uh, and normally that animal would have you know, a 50-50 chance of inheriting uh, the, the copy of this transgene that you put in. But the gene drive system actually will convert every heterozygous animal into a homozygous animal, meaning that within that lifespan, you will change the genome of the offspring of this mating so that they now have two copies of the transgene rather than a 50% chance of having one copy of the transgene. And so when you do this, the, the mathematical modelers tell us that this will drive the gene through the population. And something like an insect has a very quick life cycle, so it can be as quick as two or three weeks. And so if you were to start with a small release of, of these genetically modified animals, you could conceivably convert the genomes of the wild type population in this area um, to carry the, the transgenes that you've introduced. And so the good, the, the promise of this is, I think, pretty obvious. Uh, you could potentially um, kill a certain species, so you could uh, express transgenes that uh, would essentially render the animals sterile, or you could have them express antibodies against plasmodium or against the viruses uh, uh, that they carry. And the risks are that it's a very hard thing to rein back in once, once you've released them into the environment. And, you know, we can talk, there, there are potential risks to the ecosystem if we could achieve our goals of actually uh, locally extincting an entire species, which is uh, what some people would like to use this for. And we just, once you start pulling at those threads in the ecosystem, we don't know what other insects would come over to take over that niche. We don't know, you know, if these are the food source for, um, various other insects, you know, you could have cascading effects that we don't completely understand. What do you think about the idea of sending another gene drive after the first one if something goes wrong? That's what George was talking yeah, about last yeah, night. Yeah, and, and I mean, that sounds like a sci-fi movie uh, in, in the making.